Leviticus, Chapter 7, The Guilt Offering This is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, he shall kill the trespass offering, and its blood he shall sprinkle around on the altar. He shall offer all of its fat, the fat tail, and the fat that covers the innards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the cover on the liver, with the kidneys, shall he take away, and the priest shall burn them on the altar for an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests may eat of it. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. As is the sin offering, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them. The priest who makes atonement with them shall have it. The priest who offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have for himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has offered. Every meal offering that is baked in the oven, and all that is dressed in the pan and on the griddle, shall be the priest's who offers it. Every meal offering, mixed with oil or dry, belongs to all the sons of Aaron, one as well as another. The Peace Offering this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which one shall offer to Yahweh. If he offers it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mixed with oil, with cakes of leavened bread, he shall offer his offering with the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. Of it he shall offer one out of each offering for a heave offering to Yahweh. It shall be the priests who sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. The flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering is a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers his sacrifice, and on the next day what remains of it shall be eaten. But what remains of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burned with fire. If any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings is eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed to him who offers it. It will be an abomination, and the soul who eats any of it will bear his iniquity. The flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. As for the flesh, every one who is clean may eat it. But the soul who eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that belongs to Yahweh, having his uncleanness on him, that soul shall be cut off from his people. When anyone touches any unclean thing, the uncleanness of man or an unclean animal, or any unclean abomination, and eats some of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belong to Yahweh, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Fat and Blood Forbidden Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, You shall eat no fat, of bull, or sheep, or goat, the fat of that which dies of itself, and the fat of that which is torn of animals, 
may be used for any other service, but you shall in no way eat of it. For whoever eats the fat of the animal, of which men offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, even the soul who eats it shall be cut off from his people. You shall not eat any blood, whether it is of bird or of animal, in any of your dwellings. Whoever it is who eats any blood, that soul shall be cut off from his people. The Priest's Portion Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings to Yahweh shall bring his offering to Yahweh out of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. With his own hands he shall bring the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. He shall bring the fat with the breast, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before Yahweh. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. The right thigh you shall give to the priest for a heave offering out of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron, who offers the blood of the peace offerings, and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. For the waved breast and the heaved thigh I have taken from the children of Israel out of the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them to Aaron the priest and to his sons as their portion forever from the children of Israel. This is the anointing portion of Aaron and the anointing portion of his sons out of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire in the day when he presented them to minister to Yahweh in the priest's office, which Yahweh commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that he anointed them. It is their portion forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering of the meal offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecration, and of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which Yahweh commanded Moses in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their offerings to Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai. Chapter 8 Moses Consecrates Aaron and His Sons Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bull of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. Moses did as Yahweh commanded him and the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of meeting. Moses said to the congregation, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded to be done. Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. He put the coat on him, tied the sash on him, clothed him with the robe, put the ephod on him, and he tied the skillfully woven band of the ephod on him and fastened it to him with it. He placed the breastplate on him, and in the breastplate he put the Urim and the Thummim. He set the turban on his head, and on the turban, in front, he set the golden plate, the holy crown, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it, and sanctified them. He sprinkled it on the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all its vessels and the basin and its base to sanctify them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. Moses brought Aaron's sons and clothed them with coats and tied sashes on them and put headbands on them 
as Yahweh commanded Moses. The Priest's Sin Offering He brought the bull of the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull of the sin offering. He killed it, and Moses took the blood and put it around on the horns of the altar with his finger and purified the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar and sanctified it to make atonement for it. He took all the fat that was on the innards and the cover of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat, and Moses burned it on the altar. But the bull and its skin and its flesh and its dung he burned with fire outside the camp, as Yahweh commanded Moses. The Priest's Burnt Offering He presented the ram of the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses sprinkled the blood around on the altar. He cut the ram into its pieces, and Moses burned the head, and the pieces, and the fat. He washed the innards and the legs with water, and Moses burned the whole ram on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a pleasant aroma. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. The Ram of Consecration He presented the other ram, the Ram of Consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. He killed it, and Moses took some of its blood and put it on the tip of Aaron's right ear and on the thumb of his right hand and on the great toe of his right foot. He brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put some of the blood on the tip of their right ear and on the thumb of their right hand and on the great toe of their right foot and Moses sprinkled the blood around on the altar. He took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was on the innards and the cover of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh, and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yahweh, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of oiled bread and one wafer and placed them on the fat and on the right thigh, he put all these in Aaron's hands and in his son's hands and waved them for a wave offering before Yahweh. Moses took them from their hands and burned them on the altar on the burnt offering. They were a consecration for a pleasant aroma. It was an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yahweh. It was Moses' portion of the ram of consecration, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar and sprinkled it on Aaron, on his garments, and on his sons, and on his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron, his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tent of meeting, and there eat it, and the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. What remains of the flesh and of the bread you shall burn with fire. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting seven days, until the days of your consecration are fulfilled, for he shall consecrate you seven days." What has been done this day, so Yahweh has commanded to do, to make atonement for you. You shall stay at the door of the tent of meeting day and night, seven days, and keep Yahweh's command, that you don't die, for so I am commanded. Aaron and his sons did all the things which Yahweh commanded by Moses. Chapter 9 The First Offerings of Aaron it happened on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said to Aaron, Take a calf from the herd for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, without blemish, and offer them before Yahweh. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, 
take a male goat for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both a year old, without blemish, for a burnt offering, and a bull and a ram for peace offerings, to sacrifice before Yahweh, and a meal offering mixed with oil, for today Yahweh appears to you. They brought what Moses commanded before the tent of meeting, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahweh. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh commanded that you should do, and the glory of Yahweh shall appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar, and offer your sin offering, and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself, and for the people, and offer the offering of the people, and make atonement for them, as Yahweh commanded. The Sin Offering So Aaron drew near to the altar, and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood, and put it on the horns of the altar, and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat, and the kidneys, and the cover from the liver of the sin offering, he burned upon the altar, as Yahweh commanded Moses. The flesh and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. The Burnt Offering He killed the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons delivered the blood to him, and he sprinkled it around on the altar. They delivered the burnt offering to him, piece by piece, and the head, and he burned them upon the altar. He washed the innards and the legs, and burned them on the burnt offering on the altar. The Offerings for the People He presented the people's offering, and took the goat of the sin offering which was for the people, and killed it, and offered it for sin, like the first. He presented the burnt offering, and offered it according to the ordinance. He presented the meal offering, and filled his hand from there, and burned it upon the altar, besides the burnt offering of the morning. He also killed the bull and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons delivered to him the blood, which he sprinkled around on the altar, and the fat of the bull and of the ram, the fat tail, and that which covers the innards, and the kidneys, and the cover of the liver. And they put the fat upon the breasts, and he burned the fat on the altar. And the breasts and the right thigh Aaron waved for a wave offering before Yahweh, as Moses commanded. Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. And he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Moses and Aaron blessed the people. Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of Yahweh appeared to all the people. There came forth fire from before Yahweh and consumed the burnt offering and the fat upon the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Chapter 10 The Sin of Nadab and Abihu Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered strange fire before Yahweh, which he had not commanded them. And fire came forth from before Yahweh and devoured them, and they died before Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh spoke of, saying, I will show myself holy to those who come near me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Aaron held his peace. Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron and said to them, Draw near, carry your brothers from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they drew near, 
and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. Moses said to Aaron, and to Eleazar, and to Ithamar his sons, Don't let the hair of your heads go loose, neither tear your clothes, that you don't die, and that he not be angry with all the congregation. But let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which Yahweh has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tent of meeting, lest you die, for the anointing oil of Yahweh is on you. They did according to the word of Moses. Restrictions for Priests Yahweh spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine, nor strong drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tent of meeting that you don't die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that you are to make a distinction between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean, and that you are to teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh has spoken to them by Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons who were left. Take the meal offering that remains of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, and eat it without yeast beside the altar, for it is most holy. And you shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your portion and your son's portion of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. For so I am commanded, the waved breast and the heaved thigh you shall eat in a clean place, you and your sons, and your daughters with you, for they are given as your portion and your son's portion out of the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heaved thigh and the waved breast they shall bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before Yahweh, and it shall be yours and your son's with you as a portion forever, as Yahweh has commanded. Moses diligently inquired about the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burned. And he was angry with Eleazar and with Ithamar, the sons of Aaron who were left, saying, Why haven't you eaten the sin offering in the place of the sanctuary, since it is most holy? And he has given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahweh. Behold, its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You certainly should have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. Aaron spoke to Moses. Behold, this day they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before Yahweh, and such things as these have happened to me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been pleasing in the sight of Yahweh? When Moses heard that, it was pleasing in his sight. Chapter 11 Clean and Unclean Animals Yahweh spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the living things which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Whatever parts the hoof and is cloven-footed, and choose the cud among the animals, that you may eat. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of those that chew the cud, or of those who part the hoof. The camel, because he chews the cud, but doesn't have a parted hoof, he is unclean to you. The coney, because he chews the cud, but doesn't have a parted hoof. He is unclean to you. The hare, because she chews the cud, but doesn't part the hoof. She is unclean to you. The pig, because he has a split hoof and is cloven-footed, but doesn't chew the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. 
these you may eat of all that are in the waters. Whatever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, that you may eat. All that don't have fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of all the living creatures that are in the waters, they are an abomination to you, and you detest them. You shall not eat of their flesh, and you shall detest their carcasses. Whatever has no fins nor scales in the waters, that is an abomination to you. These you shall detest among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, and the vulture, and the black vulture, and the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, and the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are an abomination to you, yet you may eat these. Of all winged creeping things that go on all fours, which have legs above their feet, with which to hop on the earth, even of these you may eat, any kind of locust, any kind of katydid, any kind of cricket, and any kind of grasshopper. But all winged creeping things which have four feet are an abomination to you. By these you will become unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. Whoever carries any part of their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every animal which parts the hoof and is not cloven-footed, nor chews the cud, is unclean to you. Everyone who touches them shall be unclean. Whatever goes on its paws, among all animals that go on all fours, they are unclean to you. Whoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. He who carries their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean to you. These are they which are unclean to you among the creeping things that creep on the earth, the weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, and the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. These are they which are unclean to you among all that creep. Whoever touches them when they are dead, shall be unclean until the evening. On whatever any of them falls when they are dead, it shall be unclean. Whether it is any vessel of wood, or clothing, or skin, or sack, whatever vessel it is, with which any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening. Then it will be clean. Every earthen vessel into which any of them falls, all that is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break it. All food which may be eaten, that on which water comes, shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. Everything whereupon part of their carcass falls shall be unclean whether oven or range for pots, it shall be broken in pieces. They are unclean and shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern in which water is gathered shall be clean, but that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. If part of their carcass falls on any sowing seed which is to be sown, 
it is clean. But if water is put on the seed, and part of their carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. If any animal, of which you may eat, dies, he who touches its carcass shall be unclean until the evening. He who eats of its carcass shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the evening. He also who carries its carcass shall wash his clothes, and be unclean until the evening. Every creeping thing that creeps on the earth is an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatever goes on its belly, and whatever goes on all fours, or whatever has many feet, even all creeping things that creep on the earth, them you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. You shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them, that you should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahweh your God. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any kind of creeping thing that moves on the earth. For I am Yahweh who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the animal and of the bird and of every living creature that moves in the waters and of every creature that creeps on the earth to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean and between the living thing that may be eaten and the living thing that may not be eaten.